not a black or white issue. It's a human rights issue, and we need to see change. The jury in the above entitled matter. Reaction is pouring in tonight after jurors reach a verdict in the Derek Chauvin murder trial. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee, and for Barbara Lee Edwards. Guilty on all counts. Uh, jurors in the Derek Chauvin trial took less than a full day to decide the former Minneapolis police officer was guilty of second degree unintentional murder, third degree murder and second degree manslaughter in the death of George Floyd last May. It was a case that kept the nation on edge and set off civil unrest in cities across the U.S. Here at home, we have live team coverage as local rallies are set to take place. But we begin tonight with Michael George, who has the latest from Minneapolis on today's verdict. It took the jury less than 10 hours to find Derek Chauvin guilty of all charges. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. The former Minneapolis police officer was convicted of murdering George Floyd after kneeling on his neck for more than nine minutes last May. The incident sparked worldwide protests and a re-examination of race relations and policing. Nothing can ever bring their brother, their father, back. But this can be a giant step forward in the march toward justice in America. Floyd's family joined activists in prayer following the verdict. Bless those policemen that got on the stand and testified against another policeman. Today, we are able to breathe again because justice for George means freedom for all. All right. The city had been on edge waiting for this verdict. When it came, people gathered outside the courthouse cheered in relief. But they say this is just the start. Honestly, I think it's just it's just one victory. I think the battle is going to be much longer. It's about time that police are held accountable for what they do. Chauvin's bail was revoked and he was led away in handcuffs. He faces decades behind bars when he's sentenced in June. Michael George, CBS News, Minneapolis. And here at home, businesses downtown boarded up ahead of the verdict, unsure of what would happen in court today and what kind of reaction it could provoke. Rallies are taking place locally tonight, and we have team coverage. Let's go now to News 8's Shannon Handy, who's live at San Diego Police Headquarters downtown. Shannon, pretty quiet out there? Yeah, Marcella and Carlo, I've been out here for several hours and it's been relatively quiet, no demonstrators. But if you come out here near police headquarters, you will see officers position on each corner and that just is in case demonstrators make their way here. Officers are at the ready, but again, as of right now, nothing is planned outside SDPD. Now, of course, in Minneapolis, we've seen images of the National Guard as well as fencing and barbed wire in place. But if we take a look at some video that we shot earlier downtown, that's not the case here. You will notice, however, barricades outside police headquarters. They have actually been out there for several months, left over from previous demonstrations. However, if needed, they can easily be set up. Now, earlier, we did notice some businesses downtown boarded up like the CVS on Broadway. An employee there says the boards are new just in case there are protests in San Diego in response to the verdict that turned violent. Last year, several demonstrations, as you'll recall, were held downtown and in La Mesa, where we did see buildings damaged or destroyed. Now, San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria did release a statement following today's verdict saying, the jury has rightly called this case what it was, murder. Derek Chauvin's actions were an abuse of power and a disservice to the men and women who nobly protect and serve our communities, and now he will held a, be held accountable. And he goes on to say, I encourage all San Diegans to honor George Floyd's memory peacefully. Now, back out here live, again, we've been out here for several hours. We have not seen any demonstrators, no rallies planned outside police headquarters, but there are rallies, as you guys mentioned, planned elsewhere. There's one planned right now downtown. There's another at Waterfront Park tonight and another one in Oceanside. So we, of course, will keep you updated on those rallies as they occur. And Shannon, what are police saying about those rallies that are planned for tonight, if anything at all? You know, I spoke with the spokesperson for San Diego Police several times today, and he says that they are fine with people gathering and holding rallies and demonstrations as long as they do so peacefully. But if things turn violent, they do have officers, as you see, at the ready. I also spoke with a spokesperson from Chula Vista Police, and they say they, too, acknowledge that people want to gather, and they are completely fine with that as long as those gatherings are peaceful.
Hopefully it will stay a quiet night with peaceful protests. Thank you so much, Shannon. Local activists are speaking out and say even with today's guilty verdicts, the fight for racial equality is far from over. News 8's Brandon Lewis continues our coverage live from downtown tonight. Brandon. And we had an opportunity to watch the verdict with some activists and talk to them about what they've seen. And the reaction that we're getting locally is very different than what we saw earlier from Minneapolis. Of course, there's a lot of cheering and jubilation that's happening there. But here locally, we're hearing uh, that there's still progress that has to be made here. And they're looking forward to that. And that's why they say it's important to come out tonight and continue pushing this message. One person we watched the verdict with was Tasha Williamson. She, of course, a uh, big and prominent local activist. She smiled when she saw the verdict and then said this is just one officer in one instance, but still a lot of work left to go. This doesn't erase the trauma and suffering that we have endured and continue to endure across this nation as black people. Um, because even though he was held accountable today, our lives are still treated as less than today and tomorrow. So from there, we spoke with Reverend Shane Harris. He, of course, another local ad, uh, activist who has been out on the streets speaking about police reform, and he's working to try to get some documentation from the SDPD about police officers who have been had complaints made against them. And here's what he had to say about why he also says this is simply just the beginning and they want to continue working on police reform. What we're concerned about now is finding the next Derek Chauvin before he or she kills the next George Floyd. And if we really want to get to the core of the problem, we need to get down to the data of officers who are overreaching and who are building up to that George Floyd moment. And of course, local police departments say they have made progress. They ended controversial arrest tactics like the carotid restraint in the wake of the protests that we had over the summer. And they say that they're also making a continued effort toward community policing, uh, something that they say, of course, they're going to listen and continue to gather feedback from the community. Carlo and Marcella. Brandon, it is true. Some of those changes have happened since George Floyd's death. But as the activists are saying, this guilty verdict doesn't mean the end of the fight for racial equality. And that is why people are coming out tonight and gathering. Yeah, and, and that's what really is, is different. I mean, we saw in Minneapolis, that's their community. They're very celebrating the, the verdict. They're celebrating what they got there. And then locally, and we're seeing this across the nation in different cities, people are fighting for what they want their police department to serve, how they want them to serve the community. And so that's what we're seeing tonight in some of the protests, why the activists say that they want to come out tonight to make their voices heard so that they can see the reform uh, wherever they live, whether it's in Carlsbad, Oceanside, downtown San Diego, or anywhere else in the county that we're seeing these protests pop up. And we'll see what those, de those demonstrations develop into tonight. Brandon Lewis reporting live from the Embarcadero. Thank you, Brandon. News 8's LaMonica Peters is also keeping an eye on things downtown tonight. A year ago, of course, we saw large groups of people protesting there. Let's check in with her now. She's live along B Street. LaMonica, what is the situation out there tonight? Yeah, Marcella and Carlo, I am on B Street right at 8th, and there is a small crowd gathered here. We did see some police presence, um, not a lot. We saw some officers drive by. There was one officer who stopped by just to make sure that everything was okay. He assured the crowd that they have a right to be here and to express themselves, and he just wants everything to be peaceful. But after speaking with them, I got the sense that everybody was happy about the verdict. They were glad that uh, he was found guilty, and they also seemed to have a sense of relief, like they were just relieved that this is now over. But after talking to one activist, um, she had some expressions about what we need to do in the future. So I want you to take a listen to what she had to say. It definitely made my heart smile. I can definitely speak for everyone. Uh, we have been glued to our television screens since we found out that the verdict was in. Um, but like I said, we're still out here. We're going to continue to be out here so that we can keep getting justice for people all over the world as well as in San Diego. So. So as she said, uh, her name is Brittany. Um, they don't think that this is over. Um, yes, there has been a verdict. He was mm. found guilty, but there's still more cases like this around the country. And um, they seem to be gearing up for those cases and, and the fight continues. All right, thanks so much, LaMonica. We know that you'll be spending 
More time out there tonight and protesters wanting to get their message heard as we continue into the evening. Thanks so much. Yeah, expecting a different scene than some of the nights we saw yeah, last year. a sense of relief, as she yeah. said, and a calmness about it. And we do know most of the people that gathered last year were yeah. peaceful, but there were incidents of right. violence, and we're just hoping nothing like that happens again. News 8 producer Jack Molman has been working in Minneapolis for the last couple of weeks with our sister station, KARE, covering the Chauvin trial. Jack joins us live now from Minneapolis. Jack, I know it has been a very long day for you. We saw a lot of people gathered outside the courthouse before the ver verdict was read. Are the crowd still out there tonight? It looks pretty quiet behind you. Uh, yes, Marcella and Carlo, the crowd still are out there. Um, you know, I went to George Floyd Square off 30th in Chicago, and uh, it's, it was a little bit different than downtown, but there were still hundreds of people out there awaiting the verdict. You know, the jury was sent um, back to be sequestered less fewer than 24 hours. And to tell you that that day felt longer than felt like more like a year would be an understatement. Uh, I was there at George Floyd Square with with uh, the, the verdict being read outside of the speakers of somebody's car. And let me just tell you the tense moments, how quiet it was while it was being read out out of that car was quiet as a mouse. But the second the judge said guilty, you just heard mass cheering. Everybody was crying, everybody was cheering, people were embracing and hugging, there was loud music, there was barbecues going on, even a live band came by to play. So uh, the crowds are still out there, the celebrations will continue, but what people are telling me is that this is just one small victory, of course, and what a lot of the speakers there who were saying was that this was not so much justice as it was accountability. Uh, so pretty much everybody here is celebrating and celebrating just this moment tonight as a small victory, as part of history. Jack, while that day may have felt more like a year to a lot of people covering this, in real time, the verdict came back pretty quickly and very decisively. What are some of the uh, initial reactions have you gotten from people around you? Well, the, the verdict came back really quick. Most of people said that that means that everybody was pretty pretty much set on what the verdict was going to be, who was there sequestered in the room. They handed it back to Judge Cahill, who read it off to the jury. And they, they took Chauvin away, so that really wrapped things up for people here. They took it as a big sense of closure from what people have been experiencing ho here over the last 11 months or so. Jack, uh, it's clear that you're not at the epicenter, but that you were there just a short time ago. Um, and you said the mood is, is a little relief, also celebratory, but uh, that it is just the first step as well. We're hearing that in San Diego. Of course, we're much more removed from the situation there, but you, you almost explained it like it was a, a tailgate party going on. No, I, I wouldn't say that was quite the mood. It was very celebratory, don't get me wrong, but people, it was just mainly like a big sigh of relief. People were definitely prepared to uh, kind of enjoy their day, but also knowing that there's such a, a long fight ahead in what uh, they, they are fighting for here in terms of police accountability in this country. All right, News 8 producer Jack Molmud in Minnesota working with our sister station, KARE. Great job, Jack. Uh, thank you for your coverage there. And there will be much more from CBS News on the Chauvin verdict. You can watch the special hour-long report tonight at 10 right here on CBS 8.